Okay, now for the story of Thales, perhaps the very first great Greek mathematician. He was born in the city of Miletus about 624 BC. Uh, Miletus is right about here, and less than 100 years later, Pythagoras is going to be born right across the way. This is on the western coast of modern-day Turkey, which is where a great many of the uh, Greek cities were, were. This is a sort of part of the Hellenic civilization, little cities formed by the Greeks. Anyway, what about him? At one point, just to show how smart he was, he predicted that there was going to be good weather, and so he knew that the olive crop was going to be good that year. He went around ahead of time and bought all of the oil presses in the city of Miletus. So when everyone had this bumper crop, they had to come to him in order to press their, their olive oil. He could have made a killing. The story that I heard was that he actually gave these away for free. He just wanted to prove that being smart made, could, could potentially make, a, make you a huge pile of money. At another point, he predicted a solar eclipse. This impressed quite a few people. So at one point, someone made a golden tripod as a gift to the smartest person in the world and then gave it to Thales. Thales said, I'm not the smartest person in the world, gave it to someone else who gave it to someone else who gave it to someone else who gave it to someone else, who gave it back to Thales. And by the time Thales got it for the second time, he said, that's it, let's give it to the gods. And he devoted it to a temple. Uh, one time, this is a crazy story, um, there was this great uh, ancient Greek named Solon. He was such a wonderful person that when Athens decided that they wanted to have a city to uh, have laws, they had him write up all the laws. And what he did was he wrote up all the laws and then he left town because he knew that as soon as they started living under their laws, they were going to want him to change them and he wanted to g them to give him a chance. So he left town and traveled around the world. And at one point, he went to visit Thales. And he was giving Thales some grief about not having a kid. And so Thales got him back. Thales had a person pretend to be a messenger from far, far away, wearing dirty, ragged clothes like he had just traveled a great distance. And he had him visit his house, and he said that he had come from Athens. And he had, and he's like, oh, what news do you have from Athens? He's like, oh, there's this really famous guy. I forget his name, but his son just died. And Solon is freaking out, tearing his hair because he figures he's the most famous person in town. And eventually Thales says, Ha ha, gotcha, made you think your son was dead. No, that was just a little ruse I put you. That's why I don't have a kid. Ha ha ha, isn't he clever? Anyway, one time when he was traveling, he, he measured the height of the Great Pyramid of Egypt without actually having to climb the pyramid. Now, the Egyptians knew how tall their pyramid was, but this guy, walking along, figured out, and again, people thought he was pretty smart. Here's what it looks like. Here's the pyramid on the ground. Well, there was the sun out, and the pyramid was casting a shadow. There is the pyramid shadow. So what Thales did was he went right to the very tip of the shadow, plunk, and stuck his walking stick down. Now the walking stick also cast a shadow. There it was. And he saw that what we had here was two similar triangles. This big triangle and this little triangle were similar. They had the same angles, so they were proportionate. One of them was just a larger version of the other one. So there we have, we got this big triangle and then this little triangle. The big triangle, the height of it is the height of the pyramid. The little triangle, the height is the height of his stick. He knows how big his stick is. He's able to measure quite accurately how long his shadow's length was. If, let's say, the length of the shadow was exactly twice as long as his stick, then he knows that the height, so the stick is half the length of the shadow. That means that the height of the pyramid is half the length of its shadow also. So all he has to do is estimate where the center of the pyramid is, go from where he has made this mark on the sand at the tip of the shadow, find, measure the length of that of the pyramid's shadow in the same proportions. If if the shadow length is, you know, you know, seventy five percent of of the stick, then the height of the pyramid is going to if the stick is seventy five percent of its length of its shadow length, then the height of the pyramid will be as well. Very, very clever man this.